so bismillahir rahmanir rahim so let us start our module 12 and uh, in this module we will be talking about the uh, serviceability checks for the structural members and at the last there will be rafting that what we have designed in this uh, entire course we will be shifting those design into on the paper so to deliver into to the client so in serviceability checks there are three types of serviceability checks uh for the rc buildings and uh, the normal one which is normally checked is the first one is deflections uh, second one is the cracks in the members and the third one is the vibration of the slabs so normally uh, deflections checks are performed in the design practice uh, as we know that the cracking effect is also uh, have been accounted into the uh, design by using the effective amount of inertia when you are using the equal static force procedure which is the linear elastic procedure uh, but when you are performing the non linear analysis such as the performance based design uh, so for that you do not use the uh, correct moment of inertia effective moment of inertia for the members uh, so in that case you will perform a proper uh, cracking analysis for the different structural members and uh, for the vibrations vibration checks are performed for the flat plate flat slabs normally for these slab systems but it can also be performed for the uh, slab system with beam when the span length is more than 50 feet or uh, let's say it is the panel is 60 by 60 feet then you must perform the vibration check of the slabs so there are two references uh, vibration limits for the concrete sl uh, floor slabs uh, it is written by the uh, by dr justin you can read out this one and for the crack analysis of the structural concrete uh, you can read this book as well uh, in the uh, deflections uh, there are two types of deflections the first one is the short term deflections and the second one is the short, uh, long term deflections the short term deflections are due to uh, live loads and uh, it, is, it is actually uh, limited by the code and in the reference it is the uh, table 24.2.2 uh, you would be uh, thinking that why the uh, dead load and the sdl is not included in this section and uh, you can see that these limits are applicable only for live load because the members have already experienced the deflections due to dead load after the removal of form work when you finish the uh, finishing work for example the tiles marbles but the live load is variable uh, sometimes the uh, apartments or the building will be empty sometimes it will be crowded so that's why the limitation is only uh, on the live load and it is it says in the table uh, 24.2.2 that for the flat roofs or uh, this is for the flat roofs and this is for the uh, normal roofs and these are the two conditions uh, the condition is the uh, not supporting an artist non structural elements like for example windows or the partition walls uh, this is what it means non structural elements or the other electrical equipments uh, is likely to be damaged by the large deflections and in that condition you have two considerations for the deflection uh, immediate deflection due to maximum of the live roof loads snow loads and and rain loads and the limitation is l by 180 for the normal roofs uh, floors for example the uh, basement slabs first floor second floor third floor the limitation for the short term deflection it is also known as immediate deflections due to live load and it is limited as l by 360 similarly when the condition is opposite when it's supporting the non structure elements for example the windows the walls or the uh, ac ducts and other uh, equipments uh, for example mep uh, equipments then uh, likely to be damaged by the large deflection is limited as l by 140 and the non likely damage by the large deflection is is limited as l by 240 and it is the long term deflection it says that the part of the total deflection occurring after attachment of the non switch elements which is the sum 
of the time dependent deflection, which is the long term deflection due to creeps and the shrinkage due to all sustained loads and the immediate deflection due to any addition live load. So it is the sum of the uh, dead loads and live loads which will sum up uh, with the uh, coefficients of the shrinkage and creep for the concrete and the limitation is L by 40. So the short term deflection in our case uh, we will take the maximum length of the beam or you can take the uh, length or the span of the slab as well and it is 20 feet so if you apply uh, this is this is L, L by 180 uh, which is the uh, deflection due to roof snow loads and rain loads we will also check that for our, our own convenience and the major one is L by 360 which is the immediate deflection due to live load and the limitation is 1.33 inch for the L by 180 and for the L by 360 the limitation for our structure members is 0.67 inches. It means that the deflection of the beams and the slab should not be greater than 1.33 and 0.67 inches. So let us go to the E-tab and you will export the story to save. Uh, uh, you can export any story you want to check. Uh, select the second option uh, this is the same as we have done previously click OK and uh, for example save it as deflection check slab 7 now open the save again import the F2K file uh, deflection check slab 7 inches it has been uh, imported now go to the define uh, load cases uh, a new load case and click on the nonlinear analysis which is the correct which is the short term deflections and name it as short term and keep the tolerance as default uh, insert the live load one scale factor and live about one scale factor the live is actually the live of the this file of the safe and the live above is the live uh, imported from the e-type so you have to take both of these and click ok and after that we have to run the analysis after running the analysis uh, this shape will appear then you have to go to the display uh, click on the uh, deform shapes and select the short term deflection that you have defined and click on apply so you can check it out the deflection in your slab in your beams by moving the cursor and it is 0 0.00727 inches on the beams it is 0 0.01 inches in here but the maximum is 0 0.018 inch at the this is the coordinates at the 7 feet and 21 let us check it here uh, at the 7 something in here uh, this is the beam this beam because it has no support uh, let me show in the e-tab the software has calculated the maximum deflection for these beams because it is supported only in one direction and the value for the deflection is written in here the maximum is 4.2 10 to the power it is very small but the minimum because it is in the z direction it is will be in minus you will check it out the minus value and it says 0 0.018 inch 0 0.018 inch so this is the deflection you have in your model and the limitation is 
1.33 inches and 0.7 inches. It means that the deflection in your member is less than the limitation. It means that the structural member is safe against the uh, short term deflections. Uh, the next is the long term deflections and it is a bit tricky and it is uh, a bit uh, longer procedure uh, and it is uh, due to the time dependent parameters uh, and it is due to the, con the creep and the shrinkage which is the properties of concrete and as per ACI 31014 section 24.2.2 long term deflection cal calculated by multiplying the deflection duty sustained load and uh, lambda delta factor and the formula is this is the deflection long term deflection formula due to creep and shrinkage and it is equal to lambda delta into delta i sustain and the delta i sustain is equal to delta due to dead load plus delta due to 0.5 l it means that the deflection due to live uh, dead load sulfate and the superimposed dead load plus 0.5% of the live load, this, this deflection will be multiplied with the factor which is equal to alpha delta, right? And this alpha delta can be calculated using this equation which is equal to psi divided by 1 plus 5 rho dash, where rho dash is equal to A s dash divided by B d, where A s dash is the uh, top reinforcement of the slab or the beam and this value is equal to the psi value is time dependent factor is equal to 1 if you want to calculate the load for the 3 months for 6 months 12 months or uh, greater than 60 months and more the value will be 2 right so for this you have to define a new load case in the SAF which which will uh, consist of the uh, dead load and SDL plus 0.5 times live load and then after the deflection we will apply with this factor which we can be calculated from this equation. We have to go to the defined uh, load case a new locates this is the this time select the non long term cracks keep the keep options as default uh, name is long term Uh, right to in here d d d d above s d l s d l above uh, live which is zero point five and again live above zero point five so now this case has been defined click OK and again you have to run the analysis so after running the analysis you have to check again the deform shape against the long term deflection click on apply you can see the contours has been uh, changed from the previous one and it is the deflection of 0 0.016 inch at the mid of the uh, slab at the beams in this panel the value is 0 0.17 it is 0.22 inches similarly for this beam it is 0. 1 inch and the maximum value is minus 0 0.23 7 inches so we will take the maximum value if you calculate the reflections by using the top reinforcement of the slab or the top reinforcement of the beam the results will be almost the same Sadan the mic ban kai. So we will take the maximum value of minus 
जीरो पॉइंट टू थ्री right so first we will write the uh, deflection uh, that we have calculated from the uh, safe is uh, delta d plus 50% of the life is 0.3 uh, let us take it as 0.4 inches right and these are the limitations uh, which we got from this let me take it there and it says for the long term deflection the second was applicable and it is l by 480 and l by 240 if the damage is occurred due to the non structural elements attached to the uh, structure members then l by 480 you have to take and if there is uh, no possibility that the non structural elements will be likely damaged by a large deflection then you have to take l by 240 but we will take both of these let us check for our convenience for the l by 480 for the length of 20 feet the limit is 0.5 inches and for the l by 240 the limit is 1 inches so if the uh, the deflection in the members is greater than the limitation then you have to play with the uh, sizes of the structure member so this one is calculated the next one is the rho which is equal to the uh, top deflection uh, top reinforcement divided by bd where b is the width and d is the effective depth so we have used the four number 6 bars which is equal to 6 into 0.44 which will be equal to 2.64 inch square divided by 18 inch is the width of the beam and 21.75 is the Overall effective depth of the beam. From this, we get this value for the rho, and uh, alpha delta uh, can be calculated using this. So we will calculate it for the, for example, two years or three years, and this time-dependent factor value is equal to two. So we will be using two. So this is that value. Our uh, one divided by fifty into rho. We are, we, we are getting the value of one point four nine. So now in the equation, when you get this, you have to multiply the sustainable deflection into this value so we are getting sustainable deflection is 0.24 and this value is 1.49 so we have multiplied this we both this so we will get the uh, total deflection in our member is 0.36 inches so for the l by 480 the limitation is 0.5 inches and we are getting 0.36 inches similarly the limitation is 1 and we are getting this so the given sizes of the structure members satisfy the acs accessibility criteria so this was the whole story about the serviceability checks so if you have any questions you can ask and the drafting will be uh, we will arrange a new module or an extra class in which i will show you all the drafting that we have done the design in our this course so we, and i and then i will share those uh, autocad drawings uh, with you